Berserk episode 10 and 11, and by popular demand, the Berserk drinking game is back. Drink every time you see something manly. Julius and some person are fighting, that seems pretty manly to me. So the kid that uh, Julius is fighting is named Adonis. And there is the possibility that he's going to marry Charlotte, which is the king's daughter that has been flirting hardcore with Griffith. But we don't know exactly who he is, because they're saying that he's royal. So if he's royal, then, I mean, I don't want him to be Julius' son, because then that would mean that he's destined to marry his cousin, and that's gross. Oh, okay, so he is Julius' son. That makes me sad. Guts watches this all take place because he's getting ready to kill Julius because Griffith told him to, and he's like, oh, poor kid. So then Griffith goes to a party, and everyone's fawning over him because he saved the princess with his own body. And Charlotte shows up at the party, and she's so pretty! But Julius isn't at the party. He's drinking and being sad about his life because Griffith gets more attention than he does. Then he notices that there's a strange breeze in his room, and then Guts is there, and he's like, Hey! What are you doing? And that's the end of Julius. Manliest assassination ever. Oh no! Adonis walked in and saw Guts! No! Now he's gonna have to kill- Oh! Sad! <laughs> so he stabs the kid in the chest, and the kid's like, I'm dying. Okay, bye. Laughing is my defense mechanism. I'm not crazy. And then some guards run up and they're like, What's going on? And Gus is like, Crap, now you're gonna kill them too! Jeez, this is messy! But then this monk guy who's been there, like, kind of mentoring Adonis, named Hassan, he's really sad about Adonis dying. I'm sad too. He seemed like a potential, like, good friend for Guts. But as Guts is escaping, he gets shot by an arrow. Then he escapes into the sewer and everything is so manly, I can't handle it. Just can't do it. As he's lying there in the sewer water, he flashes back to Gambino and how he always wanted Gambino to appreciate him and he, he thinks about how he's so much like Adonis trying to get his dad to appreciate him. Then I had to kill you. Ah. Guts goes to find Griffith and he's hanging out with Charlotte. And Casca shows up and she's like, Seriously? Are you really gonna interrupt him while he's trying to hang out with the princess? She tidies up his wound. Can't tell if this is manly or adorable. Charlotte and Griffith are chatting and um, Griffith is saying that like the most important thing to a man is his dream, so you shouldn't look down on that. And this whole time Guts and Casca are listening to his little speech. And when Griffith says that simply existing is not acceptable, and that he hates it, Guts is listening, and he's like, Oh no, that's what I do! She is successfully smitten with him. Charlotte is, that is. Well, <laughs> so is Casca, to be frank. Griffith defines someone who is his friend as someone who is his equal. And of course Guts is horrified, because he definitely doesn't see himself as equal with Griffith, and knows that Griffith doesn't consider him equal as well, so he's suddenly like, What? We're not friends? And then the servants run out and they're like, Oh my god, Julius has been killed, princess! This is horrible! And Griffith is like, <laughs> He totally has that face right there. That was the evilest face I've ever seen. No one suspects Griffith, of course, because he's so very glorious. And by extension, they don't suspect his men. And then he's chatting with Minister Foss, who is uh, the guy, the smarmy guy who convinced Julius to try to kill Griffith. And, um, Minister Foss is all like, Oh, I'm so happy that you're here, Griffith. You are the best thing since sliced bread. I heard a rumor that the target of the assassination was you, Griffith, not Charlotte. He's trying to be all smarmy with Griffith, but Griffith isn't gonna have this. He's much smarter than Julius. <laughs> then we get the implication that Griffith wants to kill this Minister Foss guy. Oh, and that's the end of that episode. So now let's watch episode 11. Casca's looking for Griffith, but he gets more attention from Charlotte. And she's like, here's my mother's keepsake. Keep it with you. Griffith's like, I will return it to you after this battle. And she's like, hooray! That's exactly what I wanted. A chance to talk to you again. And then he walks down the stairs to where Casca's waiting. 
And then the queen appears and she's like, Charlotte, why did you give that man that present? How dare you? You're 16, that means you're an adult. <laughs> what? No. Oh, Corcus. You're such a dick. So Griffith and Casca go out to meet with the rest of the band of the hawk and the rest of the army to go off to war. I think. <laughs> I don't know where they're going. What battle are they fighting? Any battle, I guess. And Guts is still thinking about what Griffith said regarding true friends being equals, and he's like, Oh, I can't deal with this rejection. Now they're here fighting the Tudors, the guy that they've been fighting against since pretty much the beginning, ever since they started working for that king. As they go into battle, Casca's like, Oh no, something's wrong with me. But then the battle starts, so who even knows what the problem is? With women, it could be anything, really. No, Freckles! Oh, oh, the freckled friend almost died, but he was rescued by that person. <laughs> so and Casca's fighting, and she comes up against the, the big guy, the boss, and he's like, I'd rather do you than fight you. That's not manly. That's just rude. He knocks her off her horse, and he's, he's ready to kill her. Um, and, but she's, she's defending pretty effectively. Oh, all the men tried to be so chivalrous and rescue her, but it didn't work. It's gonna drive her off a cliff, everyone! So is Guts or Griffith gonna rescue her? Guts or Griffith? So he says, I won't kill you as long as you're a prostitute to my men, okay? And she's like, she was rescued by Guts, guys. I knew it was either going to be Guts or Griffith, and it was Guts. Beautiful. Mwah. Whether it was Guts or Griffith would determine um, Casca's character development from this point on. The thing is, Guts and Casca are both toiling over Griffith's most recent decisions and statements in life, so they're both freaking out. Finally. I'm so glad that guy is finally dead. I'm done with him. What? He's alive? Stop being alive. And then suddenly Casca faints. And as Gus reaches out to save her, that idiot shoots an arrow at him. And so both Casca and Guts fall off the cliff. So Guts pulls Casca up onto the, the shore. And she's not breathing. And it's like, oh no, <laughs> what now? I guess it's time for CPR. And copious groping. And then he's like, oh yeah, I was shot with an arrow. That really hurt when that happened. Then Guts determined she's gotten really sick, so he looks for shelter. And there's no other way. She's wearing wet clothes, and he can't make a fire because the enemy will see, so he has to take her clothes off, and they have to cuddle. It's the only way. It's the only way they'll survive. Oh, oh God. The whole time she was on her period. That's why it was so hard fighting today. All right. I mean... <laughs> oh, being a woman! <laughs> so meanwhile, the rest of the band of the Hawk is like, well, I mean, Guts is so tough, they're probably okay, but what should we do? And the other commanders are like, Griffith, you know, the, the first order of business is to, is to conquer the enemy, so what do you think? And it seems like Griffith's made the decision to keep pressing forward instead of searching for them. And that's the end of episode 11. Alright, so, um, per your suggestion, I'm going to wait until uh, after episode 12 and 13 before I do the retrospective. So, I'll see you next time for episodes 12 and 13. Bye!